Has your doctor told you that you have high eye pressure? It can be a pretty concerning thing to hear, but today we are gonna talk about when high eye pressure is actually really concerning and the times when it is not as worrisome. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Saya Nagori. I'm a board certified ophthalmologist and I'm a glaucoma specialist. So high eye pressure is something that I do see pretty frequently in my practice. Now, as a glaucoma specialist, I see so many patients who come into my office with high eye pressure and not all high eye pressure is the same. So normal eye pressure ranges from 10 to 21, and anything beyond that would be considered high. But that being said, there's a pretty big difference between a pressure reading of 22 and a reading of 29 or 30. So just being high, is not alone concerning, we need to look at a few other things in the patient's eye. So in order to figure out when I need to worry as an eye doctor about someone's high eye pressure, I have to put four puzzle pieces together. The first part is someone's corneal thickness. Now, if someone comes in and they have a really thick cornea, which is measured by a device called a pachymeter, like let's say their corneas are very thick and they have readings in the 600s, then a slightly high eye pressure or even a pressure of 25 may not be as concerning. This is the opposite if someone has very thin corneas and their pressure is only 23 or 24 because that means their pressure reading is actually reading higher than 23 or 24. And having thin corneas in and of itself is actually an independent risk factor for having glaucoma. Now there's also a caveat here because when you start getting into really high eye pressures, like in the 30s or even in the low 40s, most eye doctors are gonna wanna treat that regardless of how thick someone's cornea is because when you get into those really high pressures in the 30s and 40s, you are at risk for another eye problem called a CRVO, which is essentially a stroke of the eye. And this is something that can damage your vision permanently. So we certainly don't want you sitting around at those super high pressures. But if your pressure is in the low 20s or even in the mid 20s and you have a pretty thick cornea, it may be something that we just monitor and we may not necessarily use eye drops to treat it. But before we even make that decision, we have to look at the second piece of the puzzle. And this is the optic nerve. The optic nerve is cranial nerve two, and it's the nerve that connects your eyeball to the brain and it delivers visual signals from the eye to the brain. Now, if your optic nerve looks unhealthy, and what I mean by unhealthy is it can have something called cupping, where the center of the nerve appears much larger than it should, and maybe the rims of the optic nerve are very thin. In those cases, a pressure of 21 is more concerning than someone who has a really healthy nerve and a pressure of 25. So all these things really matter and looking at the complete picture is very important when we're evaluating high eye pressure. Healthy optic nerves can tolerate higher pressures than weak optic nerves. In fact, in patients with glaucoma whose optic nerves have been really damaged, sometimes they can't even tolerate pressures of 16 or 17, which in a person with a normal nerve would be considered normal pressures. The third piece of the puzzle that I look at is frequency. So if someone comes in and they've had this high eye pressure just once, then maybe I'll just bring them back in a couple weeks and check their pressure again. But if I'm starting to see a trend where the pressure is going up or it's consistent staying high, then I need to do further testing. In addition to this, we want to look at the circumstances in which the eye pressure was done. So sometimes if patients squeeze their eye really hard, it can artificially raise their pressure. Or if a technician was checking their pressure and maybe they had put a little bit of their finger onto the eye itself, that can actually artificially raise the pressure and give you a high reading, which is not actually a true high reading. So in those cases, I will often recheck the pressure and make sure that I'm not putting any pressure on the eyeball and I'm holding my fingers right here along the orbital rim so I don't put any pressure on the eyeball when I'm checking the pressure again. Now, if it's just one isolated high pressure reading and the pressure goes back to normal, there's usually nothing to do except for monitor it. The fourth piece of the puzzle is what your glaucoma testing shows. So if you have changes on your glaucoma testing, like on your visual field exam or on the OCT exam, and there's a whole other video on this channel all about the different glaucoma tests and how they're done and why they matter, but if your glaucoma testing shows signs of damage to your visual field or your optic nerve, then even a pressure of 18, 19, 20 would likely need some sort of treatment.
So let's say all your studies are normal, but you do have a pressure of 23. We may feel pretty comfortable just watching you over time and making sure that that pressure does not go up and making sure that all your testing stays normal. Now, this is also gonna depend on the thickness of your cornea because in patients who have thicker corneas, higher pressures are not as concerning as when patients have really thin corneas. The average corneal thickness is around 540, so something thicker than that would be considered 550, 600, 650, and thinner would be something Thing in the 400s or in the low 500s. Now the absolute most important thing to know about having high eye pressure is that you really need to go back for a follow-up and have your pressure checked again. And I can't tell you how many times that we've gone and rechecked a pressure and it's been normal and it's been fine, or we've gone back and realized that this is something that needs to be treated. But this is not something that you're gonna know at home. You're not gonna know if your pressure is 25 or 28. Maybe if it's 50, you'll know, but that's a very serious condition and that requires emergency care. But if your pressure is just slightly high in the mid to upper 20s, it's not something that you're gonna feel on your own. So going back to the eye doctor and getting it formally examined is really, really important. In fact, times when patients fail to follow up when they've had high eye pressure readings in the past is oftentimes when they come back and they've lost vision because of it, because they have not been following up and getting their eye pressure checked. If the eye pressure stays high, then we can talk about ways to treat it like laser or eye drops. And it all depends on what your comfort level is and how your lifestyle is. Hope you found this helpful. Let me know what questions you have in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video.